Watchman. The Watchman. The Watchman. The Watchman. The Watchman. The Watchman. The Watchman. Good afternoon once again folks and welcome to the program called The Watchman. I am your host, Minister Curtis Roach and uh, I will today be continuing with the series that we started last week. It's a two-part series. You had the first part last week and this week we'll be finishing off with part two of this series entitled The Key to eternal life. And just to recap, last week we learned that the key to eternal life can be found in the book of Hebrews 12, chapter 14. And the key to eternal life, we learn, is to live holy. In fact, continuing from when you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, it is a must, it is imperative that you live a holy life life and uh, this is a command that we received from our lord and savior from god himself 
He said in his word that we should be holy, for he is holy. And you'll find that word in the Bible over and over again. So it is a must. It is not something that is optional. Holiness is a requirement. If you want to make it to heaven, it is a must that you be holy. And we learn that the benefit of following that rule, of hearing and accepting that fact that we will in turn receive everlasting life. We will be called sons of God. Jesus will be able to stand before the Father on the day of judgment and tell him that he has established your heart blameless in holiness. And that is what we want. We want at the end of it all, we want to hear those sweet words. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Hallelujah. So, we see from last week that it is not an option and we will be continuing this week with that all important question as I promised the question that I want to answer today is how do I live holy how can I be holy now it is a natural fact I am going to be straight and honest with you to let you know that we as Christians, that no human being will ever reach that state of holiness just like Jesus was. In fact, in this body, in this world, in this life, it is impossible. But that is not what matters with God. What matters with God is what is in our hearts. So you will see that holiness is not. It is not about what we do. Or what we do not do. It is not a list of rules. For we are not governed by a list of rules. We are only governed on the grace. It is all about what's on the inside of us. And we learn this attribute about God from the book of Samuel. When Samuel was ordered by God to choose a king from the sons of Jesse. Now God instructed Samuel to go to a man called Jesse to choose a king from among his sons. Now this man Jesse, he had seven sons. The first six were big guys, well strapped, well built, probably well good looking guys. But the last one, the very small one, he was probably one of the skinny ones and not probably not very good looking. He was the one they used to look after the sheep. But as Samuel instructed Jesse, as the Lord has commanded to line up his sons before him so that he can see which one of them that the Lord God has chosen to be king. He only bought the first six because in his heart he knew to himself that the youngest one who is called David would not have been chosen. But as he brought the first six, Samuel, he looked on the eldest of the sons and he thought to himself, this is the one that God will use to be king. But lo and behold, this is what God told Samuel. God told him, do not look at his appearance because he was well built. He was strong. He had the figure of a king. He probably had the attitude that Samuel thought was fitting for a king. But God told him, do not look on his appearance or at his physical stature because I have refused him for the Lord does not see as man sees for man looks at the outward appearance but the Lord looks at the heart so although this young man 
had the build. Although this young man had the looks. Although this young man probably had the mannerism. The God of heaven saw beyond the outside. Saw beyond the flesh. Saw beyond what he looks like physically. And looked deep within his heart and saw that he was not ready. He was not the one that could fulfill the task that the Lord wanted to be fulfilled. And so Samuel had no other choice but to call on the youngest one. The youngest one who they had already written off. The youngest one that they thought would never be chosen as the one that God wanted to be king. But as they brought in David, the youngest of the sons. God told Samuel that this is the man that I have chosen. And I have chosen him because of his heart. It's not because of what he can do. It's not because of what he has done. It's not because of how he looks. It's not because of anything of the physical nature. But it is because of his heart. So God, he looks on the heart and not the outward appearance. And that is how you will be judged with regards to how you live your life. In your pursuit of holiness, your heart will be examined. It is your heart that will be examined, not your outward appearance, nothing of that sort. It is only your heart that is going to be examined. So, to get your heart right, we have to esteem to be more like Jesus. How do you live holy? Study the word of God. Show yourself to prove. Learn how Jesus was when he was here on this earth. Learn about him. For in him you will find all the answers that you need. With regards to how you should be. There is where you will learn how to be holy. You have to study the word of God. You have to read your Bible. For the word of God tells us that Jesus, he is the word. And when you study the word, you are studying Jesus. And you want to live your life. You want to strive to be like our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Don't try to be like your pastor. Don't try to be like your apostle. Don't try to be like your role models in this life. For we were all born in shame and sin. We have all failed God at some point in our lives. We have all done wicked and abominable things. Don't try to be like another man. For even the man Moses in the Bible, he was a murderer. The man David himself. Although he was called by God and was chosen and was handpicked by God, he grew up to be an adulterer and a murderer. So it doesn't make any sense to try to be like anybody else. We should esteem and strive only to be like Jesus. Be like Jesus. Learn about him. Read your word. Now, if you want to get to know somebody, what do you do? If you are courting, if you have met someone that you like and you feel that you want to get to know them better, you will be calling them every five minutes. Every little chance you get to ring them, every little chance you get to text them, you're going to do it. Why? Because the more you talk to someone, the more you communicate to someone, is the better you get to know them. And this is the way we have to approach the Bible. This is the way that we have to approach the Word of God. This is the way how we have to approach in building our relationship with Jesus. It is through the Word of God when we read it, when we study it, that is how we get to learn to know more 
about Jesus. Besides that, you need to pray. You need to pray to God. You need to talk to Him. Talk to Him like you will talk to your partner. Talk to Him like you will talk to your wife. Talk to Him like you will talk to your friends. Just talk to Him. Communicate with God. Communicate with Jesus. Keep that communication line open. For this is the way that you will learn to be more like Him. These are the ways that you will learn to be more like Him. You will learn to know Him through reading and praying. Hallelujah. Jesus. The Bible tells us that He was without sin. The book of Hebrews 4.15 tells us that He is a high priest. He is our high priest. And He cannot sympathize with our weaknesses. But was in all points tempted as we were, yet without sin. And that word is telling us that Jesus, as he lived on this earth, he also had to go through the temptations that we go through on a daily basis. He was tempted to commit the sins that we commit on a daily basis. Every known sin, every known temptation to man, he had to go through them. But the Bible tells us that he overcame them. That he was without sin. He did not fall prey to any of them. Even when the devil himself attacked him. Even when the devil himself tried to tempt him. He committed no sin. He is free from sin. That is the man that we ought to be like. For he is holy. That's the kind of holiness we are to aspire to get. We have to pursue that kind of a life. We have to pursue that kind of a living. To be unselfish. To walk in love. To be lowly minded and humble. The Bible tells us that it was his meat and drink to do his father's will. In other words, when he was here, all what mattered to him was to do the will of God. Now this is something that we have to try to do. We have to purpose in our mind, purpose it in our hearts. That everything we do. Must be done according to the will of God. For if we are not walking in the will of God. We will get nowhere. We will get nowhere fast. For if we are not walking in the will of God. The only other way that we are walking is out of the will of God. And that will lead us into hell. It is only when we aspire to be holy that we are walking in the will of God. The book of John chapter 4 verse 34. Tells us that Jesus said that. His food. Is to do the will of him who sent him. And to finish his work. So he recognized that he was not here for himself. He recognized that he was here. To do the work of God. So much of us get caught up in the things of this world. We think that as we go to work in our daily jobs on a daily basis, that that is all about life. That that is so important. But it is not. It is not important. What's important is what we do for God. Only the things that are done for God will help us in any way in our life. So we have to learn to walk in love and compassion, even to sinners, even to our enemies. We have to learn to separate ourselves from this world, from all the worldly things. Be separated from the world. And that is the definition of being holy. 
is to be separated from the world. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 17 says, Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord God Almighty. So we have to, it is a must that we do not be a part of this world. We have to come out from among them and be separated, just as the Lord commands. To be holy, we have to have an earnest and sincere desire to be close to God. Paul says in the word that he delights in the law of God after the inward man. And so we, as Christians, we have to delight in the word of God. To aspire to do the things that the word tells us to do. To aspire to obey the things that the word tells us to do. A holy man will be faithful in all the duties and relations in life. Even at work. You may be at work. And because your boss is not looking, you think you can get away with doing certain things. Having longer lunch breaks. And not doing your work. The work that has been assigned to you. But the thing is, God sees. In fact, God sees and knows every single little thing you do. So as Christians, we have to bear that in mind and know that ultimately, God is the CEO of every company that we work in. He is the CEO of our lives. So when we go to work, we have to bear in mind and know that the fact is, we are working for God. And he sees and knows everything. There's nothing we can do that he does not see. There's nowhere we can hide that he cannot look and see what we are doing. So everything we do, we have to do as unto the Lord. Paul tells us in his word that whatever ye do, do it heartily as unto the Lord. Not slothful in business, but fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. You can find that in the book of Colossians 3.23 and Romans 12.11. So we have to have that attitude that we're not working for man. We're not working for our bosses, our supervisor. We're working for God. And we have to do everything as if we're working for him. Knowing that he is watching us. Knowing that he is seeing everything that we do. Finally, before I come to a close, a holy man will follow after spiritual mindedness. He will endeavor to set his affection entirely on things above and to hold the things on earth with a very loose hand. Hallelujah. Now these are the things, or these are the requirements of being holy. To live a holy life. You have to be more and more like Jesus. And a lot of times we come. In contact with people. We are faced with certain situations. We are faced with certain trials. We are faced with certain temptations. And before we think, before we would pause and think of what we do, we react out of the flesh and we go down the wrong road. We do the wrong things. But much time, much time would be saved and much sin would be prevented if we would only ask ourselves one simple question. And that is, what would Christ do if he was faced with this situation? How would he react? If this person had come and done what he did to Christ as he's doing to me, 
how would Christ react? If we have studied the word and studied Jesus Christ and know how he is, we would get the answer right away. We would know that we should act in this way, we should react in that way. What would Christ have done or what would Christ have said is a question we should ask every time when we are confronted with things. Before we react foolishly, pause for a second and ask yourself that simple question. Now I want you to bear in mind that I'm not saying that holiness will come to rightness and perfection all at once. You will not perfect holiness all at once. And all these things that I have spoken about, you're not going to perfect them all at once. Holiness is a progressive work. Now, you also don't have to wait until these things are found in full bloom and vigor before you can be called a holy man. As I said before, and it is very imperative that you understand that it is not about your works, it is not about what you do, but it is all about your heart, where your heart is. What is the condition of your heart? Are you in full pursuit of doing what's right? Do you have a sincere desire to do what's right? Are you in full pursuit of holiness? Do you have a sincere desire to be holy? Holiness is a progressive work. Romans 6 chapter 14 tells us that we are under grace. We are under grace and not under the law. So it's only by the grace of God that we can walk this walk. I'm not going to lie to you and tell you it's going to be easy. It is not going to be easy. Because we were not born with this kind of a nature. Our natural nature is to sin. Our natural nature is to do the things that are contrary to the word of God. So it is not going to be an easy walk. But we do not have to worry about it. Once we are filled with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will guide us. The Holy Spirit will teach us. The Holy Spirit will show us what to do. If we are attentive to the sound of His still small voice, He will tell us each time that we are going wrong to stop it. Not to do that. Not to say that. Go this way. Go that way. That is what the Holy Spirit is there to tell us. To help us. He is there to help us in the walk that we have to walk. And we have to be grateful and thankful to God. For leaving us the Holy Spirit to help us with this. Because in our own strength and flesh. We could never accomplish this. But praise be to the name of the Lord that he has left us the helper, the Holy Spirit, that can help us to walk a walk that is pleasing to God. Holiness is something in a man that can be seen. It can be known and marked and felt by everyone that is around us. So if you think you're holy, you work in an office six months, one year, two years, and nobody can pinpoint you and say that there's something different about you. If no one can tell that you are a follower of Christ, if no one can say confidently that you are a Christian, there is something wrong with you. You need to go back to the basics. You need to go down on your knees and repent and start over from scratch. Because if you're holy, holiness is like light. If it exists, it's going to show itself. 
It is like salt. If it exists, people can taste it. Its savor will be perceived. It is like precious ointment, like perfume, cologne. If it exists, its presence cannot be hid. People are going to smell it. So when you're holy, it will be evident that you are. People will see Christ in you. You'll be able to be a faithful witness for Christ. Holiness, it comes from Christ through the Holy Spirit. And it can only come from vital union with Him. Through prayer and the reading of the Word of God. So as I come to close, I want you to examine your heart. Examine the life that you live. Think about what you have done today. Think about the way that you have behaved for the past few days. And if you realize that there is something wrong. If you are not fully confident that you are doing the things that you are supposed to do. That you have been saying the things that you are to be saying. Go down on your knees and pray to the Lord. Ask the Lord. Not only to save you from the guilt of sin. But to save you from the power of sin. Ask Him to give you the Holy Spirit to save you from the power of sin. Ask the Lord to make you holy. Ask the Lord to teach you to do His will. The Bible tells us that whatever we ask for, if we believe that we have received what we ask for, that we will receive it. So when you ask the Lord for the Holy Spirit, believe that you have received Him and you will receive Him. Step out by faith. And walk the walk that you have to walk in God. Step out by faith. The word of God tells us again. That without holiness. No man can see the Lord. Holiness is not an option. It is a must. Oh you must be holy. Because your God is holy. So the essence. Of the whole word that I've brought to you. Is that you have to be more and more like Jesus. The more you are like Jesus. Is the more holy you will be. Is the more pleasing you will be in the sight of God. I have come to the end of the series. And I pray that you would have received. The word that the Lord has sent to you. Through me. I've come to the part of the program. Which. Is becoming. A favorite part of the program for me. Where I give you. An altar call. Now I believe that this part of the program. Is just as important. As the word of God. Because it gives you the opportunity. If you have. Heard the word, if the Holy Spirit is speaking to your heart and you feel convicted in any way, this is the time that you have to make it right, to come to God. So I would admonish you, wherever you are right now, whatever you're doing, to stop it. For time is not under your control. Wherever you are. Whatever you are doing. I am going to lead you. In a short repentance prayer. If you are not saved. If you are a sinner. And you would like to become saved. If you would like to receive eternal life. If you would like to be saved. From the torment and torture of hell. Repeat this short prayer after me. 
the Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that I am a sinner. I believe that you are the Son of God and that you came and died for my sins. I humbly ask you to wash me with your cleansing blood. I humbly ask you to forgive me of all of my sins. Remove all of my unrighteousness from me. Make me whole. Make me one of yours. Thank you for saving me. Amen. And if you have said that prayer, congratulations. You are now on the narrow road to heaven. Hallelujah. I give you praise, Lord. I give you all the thanks for what you're doing, for what you have done, and for all that you're going to do, Lord. I give you thanks and I give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Now for the time that I have remaining, I would like to share with you a word that was received from the Lord by Susan Davis. And for our first time listeners, Susan Davis is a mighty woman of God that God is using in these last days. He has given her the gift in which she is able to hear the audible voice of God. He uses her to dictate messages and letters to give to us, to give to you, to give to me, to give to all of us. And she has been doing this faithfully. She has been sending around the Lord letters around the world and they have been a tremendous blessing to everyone that comes in contact with them. I am receipt of the word, the very last word that she received on July the 15th of this month, in this year 2013. And I would like to share with you what the Lord would like you to know today. The title of the word that she received or the letter that she received is your Bible is unfolding before your eyes. And it reads, Susan, it is I, your Lord. I want you to give my children these words. The hour closes in, my children. You still do not want to pay attention. I have sent forth my messengers, my words, my signs. I even forecasted what would happen many years ago. I gave this through my precious word, through my precious messengers many years ago. Today, those words are as solid as they were many years ago. I, God, do not lie. What I say will happen is happening. Your Bible is unfolding before your eyes. Open up my word and it lines up with the time. Only those who are sleeping cannot see it. Only those who are willfully rebellious refuse to see the times they are living in. They do not want to believe that my words are coming to pass. They love this word too much and this interferes with their love of God. If you believe my words and follow my truth, you would stop interacting with the world and you would sit up and pay attention to what is going on around you. As it is, you want to chase after everything that is revolving in this world. You lust after a world that has turned its back to me. You have traded your soul with the devil and exchanged it for a brief walk with this evil world. 
that is temporal and fading fast. Don't you know that if you pursue the wicked ways of this world, you will only end up where the wicked are going? Wake up, my children. Wake up quickly. Stop prostituting yourself to an evil lover who will take everything you have and leave you for destruction. These are not the words of a harsh, unkind God. These are the words of a loving father who is desperately trying to save his children who are about to fall over the edge of a cliff, never to be recovered again. You are turning right into the trap of the enemy. Your eyes are blinded to the truth and the only way out is if you turn back to me. You must come back to your God and make a humble surrender of your entire life. A portion of your life is not adequate. I want everything or nothing at all. You either give me everything or you will die by the sword. The sword of my enemy who longs to put all of my children in hell. And hell is broadening every day. Accommodating all those children who are rejecting me, their God. If you are not fully and completely mine, this message is for you. This is a warning and you now know what I require of you. You can never say that I have not warned you. I have warned you in many ways. So you will face me without excuses on that day when we will be face to face. So when you stand in front of me, Will I embrace you as my own or will I cast you out of my sight for eternity? This now must be your choice because I, God, cannot choose for you. I pray that you will come with me before it is too late. This is your Savior. This is your Lord and Savior. Great in grace and mercy. Great in justice and truth. This is a word that the Lord has sent through his messenger to you today. The coordinating scriptures for this letter are Matthew chapter 24 verses 32 to 35. Revelation chapter 6 verse 8. Isaiah chapter 13 verse 11, Romans chapter 14 verse 12, and Isaiah chapter 5 verse 14. We have now come to the end of this program. And I thank you kindly again for making the time to listen in. And I pray that your heart will be changed. That you will have a new look on life in full pursuit of holiness. Thank you again for listening to The Watchman. I was your host minister, Curtis Roach from Shiloh Revival Tabernacle. And if you are looking for a place to worship on a Sunday, you can find us at Parkview School on West Green Road in London. The postcode there is N153QR and we worship from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. If you would like to contact me for any reason, you can find me on Facebook by searching for Minister Curtis Roach. You can leave me a message there or you can go directly to my page, the page for this program, by searching for the Watchman Radio Program. You can also go directly to that link by going to www.facebook.com forward slash The Watchman Radio Program. Thank you again for listening and God bless you.